to rational zeros of a polynomial. Let us take an example and then we see how we find all these zeros. We have a polynomial px equals x to the 3 minus 5x plus 2. We like to find all the zeros of this polynomial, rational, irrational, all of them. So we have a coefficient here, constant coefficient which is 2 and the leading coefficient is 1. So the format of uh, rational zeros will be like this. So our x will look like take all the factors of 2 which are plus minus 1, plus minus 2 and the leading coefficient has 1 so we take plus minus 1. Now what does it mean that x possible x for this will be if you divide this by this you get plus minus 1 and that one gives you plus minus 2. So we basically have four possibilities 1, minus 1, minus 2 and 2. So these are our possible zeros. Now you can test all this here. If you plug x equals 1 it doesn't satisfy. If you plug x equals negative 1 doesn't work. x equals negative 2 doesn't work. But if you plug x equals 2 you can see that it is 2 to the 3 minus 5 times 2 plus 2. So 2 to the 3 is 8 minus 10 plus 2 equals 0. So that tells us that x equals 2 is a 0 for this polynomial. Now you can apply synthetic division. So write a 2 here and then list the coefficients. So first x cubed has 1, x squared is missing so put a 0. Then you have a negative 5 after that 2. So our synthetic division says you plug 1 here, pull 1 here and then multiply by 2, add together. Again multiply, put it here. And then you get negative 1, multiply, you get a negative 2, that's 0. That is expected. That when you divide by 2, you should get remainder 0. So what is remaining for other two zeros? 1 times x squared plus 2x minus 1 equals 0. So this is a quadratic form. You cannot factor this one. So let us try a quadratic formula. So in a quadratic formula, it's negative b, b is 2 minus 2 plus or minus b square which is 4 minus 4 a c over 2 times a a is 1 so you are getting finally negative 2 plus or minus square root of this is 8 over 2 so then further simplify you get minus 1 plus or minus because radical 8 is 2 radical 2, 2 will cancel out, so you get radical 2. We got our zeros at x equals 2 and then negative 1 plus square root of 2 and then negative 1 minus the square root of 2. The smallest one is this, then, then the bigger than that one will be this, x2, and then this one is the largest, so we call it x3, x2. Okay, so we got this one now. The way work is asking to post your answer accordingly. They are saying that when you post your answer, you post like x1 lesser or equals x2 lesser or equals x3. So we need to see the order of this. So we have ordered, now we we'll post it in the way work. And then when they're asking for end behavior, we have a power function x to the 3. We have seen in previous sections when x goes to infinity, the right side goes to infinity because the graph looked like this. And then when x goes to negative infinity, the left side, the graph goes to negative infinity all the way down. Now we are taking example number two, which says that you need to find all the zeros of this quadratic polynomial. So this one you can go direct with quadratic formula. And if you remember the quadratic formula, x equals minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a when you compare with ax squared plus bx plus c for your function. So the zeros are coming from there. Now a equals 1, b equals 1 and c equals 4. So then you can apply quadratic formula that gives you negative 1 plus or minus square root of b is 1 so square it 
minus 4 a is 1 and c is 4 divided by 2 times a is 1. Now if you simplify further you get minus 1 plus or minus square root of negative 15 over 2. Further simplification will give you like negative 1 plus or minus i square root of 15 over 2. So you can use your calculator to simplify this one as a decimal or just leave it as it is like 1 half plus or minus the square root of 15 over 2i. So then zeros are like x equals negative half plus the square root of 15 over 2 and another one is negative half and i is there negative half square root of 15 over 2i. So we got our zeros which are all complex numbers. And if you would look carefully, this one is the conjugate of that one. We'll see now how to post this answer in web work. They're asking that write your answer x1 with a negative imaginary part. So I will write accordingly. So we put a negative sign here. So negative half minus the square root of 15 i over 2. And then when they're asking for positive parts, so I am taking the plus one here. Now about the multiplicity, we have only one zero here, one zero here. So multiplicity will be one, and in this case also one. If you need to know detail about it, you need to check the previous sections like 2.1, 2.2, 2.3. All right, so we have, this is the negative imaginary part, this is the positive imaginary part, and we have only one factor on this, and this is another factor, and it's a quadratic form, so the multiplicity is one. We are done.